Now at five, a new policy for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, one that could prevent some students from enrollment. They don't care. And I want the accountability for it. A Hendricks County mom is taking action against her school district. Why she says they're not following the law when it comes to students with special needs. There was actually talk about, well, the city's not gonna do anything until somebody gets killed. That's not an option. Danger on the Monon Trail, the issue some people are running into and how they are working to resolve it. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. And now at five Catholic schools in the 39 central and southern Indiana counties that make up the Archdiocese of Indianapolis could deny enrollment to transgender students. Thank you for joining us here at five. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. As stated in a new policy, the decision would be done on a case-by-case -case basis. RTV6's Troy Washington is working for you to share reaction to this change. There are new guidelines in place for the Indianapolis Catholic schools. The new rules warn that transgender students may not be able to enroll. From a, uh, a personal, compassionate standpoint, you're hurting kids now. Like This has gone too far. Belinda Drake is a part of the LGBTQ community. She's also a candidate for state senate. She was outdone by the new stipulations. It's heartbroken um, just because at the end of the day, they're going to discriminate against children. It's an eight page document that calls for each decision to be made case by case. It notes students who may be confused on their sexuality can be admitted if they follow church teachings. Policies have to include everybody, regardless of how you, you love, how you identify, you still deserve an education. For our state, um, we're continuing to make progress at all levels. Um, but this was to me, a slap in the face of what our national um, Supreme Court had decided just last week if I, if I was standing. The change goes on to say that children who have switched from their birth sex in any way may not be admitted. Our educational system is, is supposed to be welcoming, it's supposed to be inclusive, it's supposed to provide everyone access. And it was just heartbreaking to see that um, our most vulnerable, our children, um, now have to to battle this. To Working for you, Troy Washington, RTV6. We received a statement from the Archdiocese which reads, quote, we welcome all students and families with the understanding that the Archdiocese of Indianapolis's schools are a ministry of the Catholic Church, and we strive to integrate our faith and the teachings of the Catholic Church into all aspects of our school culture and curriculum. Some students who attend the Archdiocese schools question their sexual identity, and we recognize that their struggles have a profound effect on their lives. The Archdiocese's goal is to always walk in accompaniment with young people and their families. Such accompaniment may result in the provision of resources, accommodations, and or other supports in alignment with church teachings. The hope is that we can continue to serve the student and their family. The safety and welfare of each student is a priority, end quote. A Hendricks County mother has filed a formal complaint with the Indiana Department of Education, alleging the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation failed to address her son's special needs. Tiffany Matthews says the district also retaliated against her son because she spoke up at a board meeting and on social media. Call 6 Investigates Kara Kenny has been digging through the complaint and explains what parents are entitled to under the law. Tiffany Matthews' son Alex is a 15-year-old student at Tri-West High School. He's been diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. Tiffany says her son has struggled in school because of his disability since the fifth grade. Tiffany says she tried to get her son extra help and to have the district evaluate Alex, but she says it fell on deaf ears. Tiffany's formal complaint filed this month against the district alleges they dismissed her and chalked up his dismal performance to a lack of motivation. Motivation. A very bright kid when it comes to things, and he knows quite a bit. He just does not learn the same way that they're trying to teach everybody. I wonder how many other kids they've done it to, but I want Alex to be able to get the education that he deserves. And it's, you know, it's not fair to him. We're hoping, of course, to get him evaluated. We're hoping to get him qualified for the help that he should have been getting for the past few years. And as far as other students, 
we're hoping maybe it does help some other kids. Maybe, you know, part of the remedies we're asking for, or one of the remedies, is some training. Tiffany's attorney, Tom Blessing, says schools have to follow a federal mandate to identify and evaluate children with disabilities. Blessing wants parents to know they have the right to have their child evaluated by a school psychologist at no cost. We reached out to the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation for their response to Tiffany's complaint. A district spokeswoman told us the corporation does not comment on pending litigation and is legally obligated to maintain the privacy of students. Kara Kenny, RTV6. And Tiffany Matthews and her attorney have requested a due process hearing with the Indiana Department of Education. No hearing date has been set yet. This is not the first time Tiffany has been vocal. She also spoke out against how the district handled the allegations involving teacher and coach Tyler Bruce. Tyler Bruce was fired from the district after he was charged with child seduction and obstruction of justice. He's requested his trial be moved out of Hendricks County. A hearing is scheduled for July 7th and his trial is set for July 29th. Bruce denies the allegations. And today, the leaders of all the public schools in Marion County issued a letter to parents saying schools will start on time in a matter of weeks. The superintendents of IPS, Speedway, Beach Grove, and the eight township schools districts said the decision was made in collaboration with the Marion County Public Health Department. It's anticipated Marion County will be in stage five, reopening by mid-July. All the schools will offer in-class learning at school or online for students who are not able or uncomfortable returning to schools on the scheduled start date. More details will be released to families in early July. As some states across the country see record high COVID-19 cases, Indiana has continued to slowly decline. Today, Governor Eric Holcomb and Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Box warned Hoosiers not to become complacent because the state is seeing a decline in coronavirus cases. Rather, state officials want Hoosiers to continue practicing good health habits. Dr. Box says it's often younger people who don't follow social distancing and mask wearing guidelines, and then they put others at risk. They don't social distance as well. They go to the bars, they go to the clubs together. They may not be wearing their masks or if they do wear them early in the evening, they come off later in the evening. And it's not really what's going to happen to them necessarily. It's the individuals that they take that infection home to that's going to be an issue going forward. It may put more people in the hospital with grandma and grandpa or mom or dad. So let's get to those numbers they're talking about. An overall decline in deaths has been the trend over the past six days. The state reported nine more COVID-19 deaths today that occurred between June 9th and yesterday. The statewide total now stands at 2,386. 281 more Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus. That's one of the lowest numbers of the past six days. Statewide, the total is now over 43,000. About 10% of those tested have tested positive. We learned today that Indiana Pacers guard Malcolm Brogdon has tested positive for COVID-19. He released the following statement, quote, I recently tested positive for the COVID virus and am currently in quarantine. I'm doing well, feeling well, and progressing well. I plan to join my teammates for the resumption of the NBA season and playoffs. And the Pacers are planning to be in Orlando next month as one of 22 teams to resume the NBA season. All games will be played at one site, the Disney World Sports Complex. Kevin. Absolute sunshine this morning. We've had the few fair weather clouds pop up this afternoon and even a few showers. I'll take you to those in a second. 80 degrees. The humidity is still very pleasant in central Indiana. We've had some gusts over 20 miles per hour. Look toward Crawfordsville and Lafayette will zip into Warren and Fountain counties crossing the Wabash River. There's some rain. Covington, Williamsport, Attica headed toward Vetersburg. That slides to the south and east and we'll go into southwest portions of Decatur County. Some rain there. Then also, uh, as you see, north of Interstate 74 in Franklin County. Temperatures, they're comfortable today. We'll, we'll talk about temperatures for the weekend that will be much more uncomfortable. We'll talk about that coming up. Okay, thanks, Kevin. See you soon. A group of neighbors is taking matters into their own hands after hearing about an ongoing and dangerous issue on the Monon Trail. There have been several reports of cars turning onto the trail from 54th Street, likely mistaking it for a driveway. RTV6's Megan Singtorm is working for you, showing what they are doing now to stop it from happening again. 
Imagine walking or riding your bike on the Monon and coming face to face with a car. It's something people say is happening almost daily on this stretch of the trail, and they say something needs to be done to stop it. There's this driveway to the left and another driveway to the right. The Monon Trail just feet away from both and now being mistaken for one as well. I think people are getting confused. I think I don't think it's, you know, intentional. I think it's confusion. There have been multiple reports of cars turning onto the Monon Trail from 54th. Some say now that Mama Carolas has their driveway closed for outdoor seating. It's happening even more. So these neighbors are working to raise awareness and come up with temporary solutions until the city can get involved. We're wanting to kind of clear the area for cars to be able to see the pathway. Um, actually, we had a gentleman do a lot of trimming yesterday. We set out some cones yesterday and we're thinking about actually, you know, doing some lines so it looks more like a path instead of like a driveway. Let's not wait. Let's just we'll do what we can do now. It's not might not be perfect, um, but you know, it's our neighborhood and that's what neighbors do come together, coming together sooner than later. Why would we ever wait for somebody to actually get injured or get killed by a car that's gone onto the moon on there's that's not a, you know, it's not an option working for you. Megan Sanctorum, RTV six. Thanks, Megan. And a spokesperson for the Department of Public Works said they are aware of this situation and the city is looking into several possibilities likely temporary billboards and additional signage. We will let you know once they decide on the best approach and move forward. I burnt all my bridges. This was the last stop. Um, so, you know, I clung to this like the drowning would a life preserver. Coming up, how money from the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund is helping the state's largest men's recovery house. The bus may be yellow, but its message is all about being clean and green. What makes this bus so special and the first of its kind in the state? RTV6 is partnering with United Way during the pandemic for the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. Money is going to help organizations that directly impact Hoosier families. Tonight, our Nicole Griffin is finding out how the money is also helping the state's largest men's recovery house. Progress House is currently home to 95 men recovering from substance use disorder. Like many organizations during the pandemic, they've had to make some changes to keep these residents safe. And tonight we're learning how money from the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund is helping. I burnt all my bridges. This was the last stop. Elliot Severy knew his third stay at Progress House was his final chance to make a change. I woke up in Florida with a robbery charge. The Plainfield native says he dealt with substance use disorder for 12 years. Someone who doesn't have this disease doesn't know what it's like to wake up at 2 in the morning and have to drink a pint to stop shaking. Put something in my arm in order to be able to brush my teeth to get well. He says despite coming from a good home, using drugs and alcohol was how he escaped reality but his final stay at the state's largest men's recovery house changed his life. I know for a fact that if it wasn't for this facility, I would probably do, be doing 30 years in the Department of Correction um, if I was lucky. This is, a, is a, a space and a career where you get to see miracles occur. So you see people that are coming in broken and, you know, that aren't sure that their life can change and to see them not only piece their life back together, but begin to thrive, it's indescribable. Money from the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund is allowing them to continue changing lives. It's helping pay for PPE, extra staff hours, and upgrades to the building. During the pandemic, 75 men sheltered in place while receiving services. The magic of a recovery residence is in the community. It's given me a quality of life that is beyond my wildest dreams. Progress House is also a subsidiary of Aspire Indiana Health, which allows them to provide primary health care in a recovery residence environment. As for Elliot, August will mark three years of being sober, and he's now working as a reentry coordinator at Progress House. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. We will continue to show you how your donations to the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund are being used to make a difference and help others. Nearly $24 million has been donated so far. You can donate to the fund by texting HELP2020 to 91999.
The wheels on the bus still go round and round, but the fuel in the bus does not come from a pump. Carmel Clay Schools had a ribbon cutting today to unveil the state's first electric school bus. The zero emission bus built by Bluebird is part of the district's initiative to move to greener alternative fuel buses. The bus is 100% fueled by electricity and will emit zero harmful substances into the air. Well, there's no emissions, um, no, uh, you know, there won't be any fossil fuels used. Um, so for, you know, the neighbors, for the neighborhood, plus the students on the bus, it's, you know, it's, it's a much healthier atmosphere. Once we start school, we'll be ready to go. Uh, the big thing is the kids will have to be on the stop on time because they won't hear it coming. The district has installed two charging stations, including one at the bus garage. This is not the district's first experience with alternative fuels. 24 of its existing buses are powered by propane autogas. It's the times we live in now. Now to the Storm Team 6 forecast, and it was a great day, Kevin, to spend some time outdoors. And uh, it was a nice evening in most spots, Mark. It was so good today. It was a nice day to eat lunch outside. Check this out. Lots of sunshine early in the day. The only challenge to eating outside sometimes is the wind. At least today we had winds gusting over 20 miles per hour, so you need to use the heavy fork. Keep your hand on uh, something to keep it from flying away. We've had the clouds build during the afternoon, even a few showers. We'll go on a radar tour here in a second. Okay, the squiggly line goes up. That means the humidity continues to climb, and it will be a very humid weekend. That's the fuel for thunderstorms, which will be in the forecast daily. The chance for rain is minimal tomorrow and most of, thir uh, most of Friday. By Friday night, our rain chance will increase overnight into Saturday. Then you see Saturday, Sunday, Monday, your outdoor plans likely to be interrupted at some point. The rain that does fire up is having trouble holding together. You can see up towards South Bend, some rain and thunderstorms, those sliding southeast. Peru, Logansport could see that. And then in uh, Warren and Fountain Counties around Vetersburg and uh, also Attica, some showers there. And in southeast Indiana, those are starting to pull away from the central portion of the state. Temperature 76 in Peru, 79 in uh, Muncie. Other temperatures in the metro area, all upper 70s to around 80 degrees. I want you to meet Griffin. Say hello to Griffin. Keith Hatton is one of my many bosses at RTV6. This is his puppy, and I had to notice if you look around Griffin, I think the Hatton family is up for yard of the year. That is a plush lawn with perfectly mowed stripes. It will be watered here eventually over the next few days. 57 the morning low tomorrow in Peru. Temperatures comfortable to start with now. These overnight lows are starting to get warmer and will be significantly warmer for the weekend. Dry 84 tomorrow. Our temperatures as we go beyond tomorrow warm up quickly. Temperature of about 90 on a Friday. The only thing that keeps our temperatures from that 90 degree mark over the weekend will be thunderstorms. Periods of thunderstorms Saturday, Sunday, even Monday, and four mornings in a row where temperatures will be around 70 for overnight lows. More tropical feel there. We'll be back with more of the news at five right after this. Working for you. Happening right now, a giveaway of free milk on the south side, and you still have time to take part. This is the third distribution of milk by Prairie Farms at Franciscan Health as a way to say thanks to health care providers and to the public. The giveaway of 1,000 gallons of 2% milk runs until 7.30 or until they run out. Just head to the hospital's northwest parking lot at 8111 South Emerson Avenue. Could you be spending too much time with your family during this pandemic? Experts say that could be a reason you're so stressed. Tonight at 6, what you can do to lower your anxiety. But first, there's much more ahead on the news at 530. We'll be back in just a few minutes.